G'day guys, welcome to today's vlog. Starting off the vlog by heading out to go for a bike ride. We've got the mountain bike up top there, so I'm gonna take it out to some trails and get some riding in. It's gonna, it's, it's already a hot one today. It's at 29 and a half degrees Celsius. No doubt it's gonna get plus 30. Hot day for riding, but uh, gotta get a good ride in. And yeah, can't wait, it's, it's gonna be pretty sick. I've just adjusted the bike up because I think it was a little bit too, like the seat wasn't high enough for myself and I wouldn't and I wasn't fitting on it properly so I've adjusted all of that so hopefully it'll be a nice comfortable ride. So we made it to the same spot I've been here previous times. Good spot, good track, just up here. Getting set up and geared up, gonna get everything on. Be stoked. Feels like it's cooled down a little bit. But yeah, I gotta get some sunscreen on. It's gonna be a hot one today. It's good, guys, that uh, the Achilles has healed up pretty much 100%. So I'm gonna get back on the bike after a few weeks of rest. Maybe a week, I don't know how long I was resting for, but I think I'm feeling pretty good now that I can get on some kind of bike and ride. Oh no, that's gonna be annoying. I need to get a lid for my drink bottle. I fit so much better now, but also guys, I should mention that I am wearing my road cycling shoes and the pedals on this bike, so it's clip in. So my biggest fear is when I come off, I can't unclip. I'm just gonna have to deal with it. So guys, what I think I might do in today's vlog is make today's vlog a Q&A style vlog. So, so first question comes from Aussie Picker No BS. How many XRP Ripple did you get? Also, you know if XRP gets added onto Coinbase, you know XRP can go up like 10 times. So that's pretty cool news to hear. But I ended up buying 500 USD, so it worked out to be about 657 Australian dollars worth of XRP. Um, let me do a quick update for you guys just to let you guys know what I'm up to on my app here. See if we can get reception out here, that'd be great. So I'm $16.28 in the hole. My equity is $6.27. So that's what it's looking like. 16 or so down. But it is, it is, it is a long-term game. So this is just an edit back because I've been editing this video that you guys are currently watching and it's like four days later. So I just want to give you guys an update on what my Ripple's sitting at at the moment because at the moment it's gone up quite a lot and it's looking really good. I also just bought an extra 200 and maybe 70 US dollars of Ripple. So I have about um, 770 US dollars of Ripple, which is about a thousand or just over a thousand dollars in Ripple. And this is what it's looking like. So it is up 537 US and the equity amount is about 1600 or so. Also, thank you guys for all of the comments, like the Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays type of comments. Really appreciate all the love. Hope all of you guys had an awesome Christmas as well. And also thank you for all of the advice around cryptocurrency. It looks like there's a heap of peeps on here that are investing, which is awesome to see. So thanks for the advice, everyone as well. Also, Renee Stella says, would love to hear more about how you go. I think referring to crypto. So there's the update right there for you, Renee. So Daniel Betts and Linda Painter ask about the dropshipping. Cause I mentioned in a few vlogs that I was just working on my dropshipping website. Um, part of it is my own personal clothing brand as well, um, which I'm working on behind the scenes. And also it's just dropshipping, like going to AliExpress, finding products that are really hot and selling them on a website at a marked up price to make profit that way. But essentially, yeah, that's what it is. Dropshipping is just sourcing something from a supplier, whether it's in China, like AliExpress, building a website storefront on Shopify or something like that, or even selling it on eBay and then marking up the price to make your profit because you're getting it from China. They, they construct and build the items there at a super cheap cost and that allows for profits to be made there. So Craig Hill asks, I kind of replied to this one in the comments, but I'll just put it in there anyway. Hey, are you going to do a store sale or anything between Christmas to New Year or just in January to increase sales? Just be 
So what I would essentially like to do is like do a sale every month. That's what I've been in the sort of habit of doing is just like doing a 30 to 35% sale store wide on the store just to encourage more sales. But um, I think what I'm gonna do is set up a, a sale as soon as I get back. Um, it was pretty slow over Christmas. Um, I put a sale up and it didn't sell anything during that sale. I had it running for one day. But what I think I might do is put up a pretty enticing sale, maybe 40% because what I wanna do is get all of my um, inventory out the door because most of it is like average of $30 per item and I want to this year or next year 2018 I want to focus on sourcing higher profitable items so then I can make more money for my time because my I think my time is uh, worth a bit more so I want to focus on doing that so that in flushing out all of all of what I have that's below $50 average price and then starting again which is um, the plan so then when I get van life going, I'll have items in the van. That's another reason why I want it to be $50 or more because limited space in van, which means having to store it until it sells. So you want to make sure it's worth a bit of money instead of, you know, carrying around items that are going to take up space and not be worth the space, if that makes sense. I guess if it's a smaller item and it's, you know, 30 bucks, then I might grab it, but mainly want to focus on $50 plus items so that, so to get there, I think I'll have to do some sales. So that's what I'm going to focus on doing is uh, getting some sales. I might do that as soon as I get back home. Oh, it's all muddy. Okay, so Linda asked another question, Linda Painter. What is your secret to selling? So this is a quite a lengthy response, I would say, but I'm gonna try and have to shorten it down for this video. How do you get people to go to your store? eBay plus PayPal fees, how to minimize, or is that just the case of suck it up and, and go along with it? So, well, I guess it's just, there's so many things. Um, I guess one of the things is quality. So you wanna focus on quality in, in terms of items that you're picking up. So you wanna get items that are desired, trending, you know, people want them. They're real quality items. Quality also equates to price. So as I was saying before, like I want to focus on more expensive items. So get off there, bro. Um, so essentially $50 or more. But if you source the right items, people will buy. And you just have to grow the store to where you have, I guess, trying to get more than 60 and improving it. And um, I mean, with a 300 item store like I have, I seem to be doing pretty well with sales. Like 300, I reckon you could easily do $1,000 a week on a 300 store, just replenishing it every day or every couple of days with, you know, 10 or so items, like just replacing the items that you sell and just maintaining that 300. I think you should be fine, but I don't know. I guess I've just been doing it for a while that I've picked up on skills that I'm not even I'm sure I'm aware of, but essentially it's just you got to find the right items. That's what I think it is. Doing buy it now, I have found for myself in my own experience, buy it now with the best offer is the best thing that's worked for me because often with the completed listings, when an item has sold and it has gotten a smaller price, it's because it's on a bid most of the time and the bid is where you can get the items the cheapest if you're buying it. But if you're selling it, you can sit a little longer and sell it for on a buy it now with the best offer, which from my experience is, is, has worked pretty well for me. But essentially with the fees and stuff, you just need to work that out and it's just a, it's just a cost. It's something that you have to manage and, and you have to expect for the business. And um, yeah, try not to make it a surprise. That's all I can really talk about in this video. I might make a, another video in future. Hey Spidey, um, in more detail if I come up with any more ideas. Hopefully that answers your question, Linda. So Daryl was curious to see if there was any changes with my feet being covered in socks and shoes opposed to wearing thongs. To be honest guys, I really think the reason behind the whole Achilles injury was because my bike setup was completely wrong. Like my seat height, it was too high. I think it was, it was because it was too high. And my Achilles was just stretching on every stroke and I didn't realize until I'd done multiple hundred kilometers and then that just put the strain on it. And to be honest, like I was riding around Japan with Eric in thongs and I had no problem whatsoever. So to be honest, I think it was just the bike setup. It had changed a bit since Japan because I had to pack it down and, and I think that was the cause of it. So next time before I go on another bike tour, I'll make sure that I am properly fitted to the bike so that um, that doesn't happen. Oh, we got some flies out here. I was watching this bike touring video, this guy through the center of Australia. He had to wear a fly net. There was literally hundreds of flies, like two, 300 flies just all over his face. It was insane. I mean, I'm only copping maybe like 10 flies at the moment, but I couldn't imagine. Oh, it would just irritate me so much. I was planning on doing a bike tour through the center of Oz, <laughs> but Believe it or not, that's the only one thing that's sort of uh, wanting me not to go through there because of the, the freaking flyers. They'd be so annoying. <laughs> oh, that's 
a good ride. Ride's done, guys. That was bloody awesome. I didn't even end up eating any snacks when I was there. I did bring some fruitcake with me. Mm. Just working on some dinner guys, gonna do some fried rice. Dad is heading down in my car to the supermarket to get some ingredients at the moment. And uh, gonna get this fried rice going. So I'm in my car now. Dad got back because the shop down here is closed. So I'm gonna go for a bit of a drive a few towns down the road to get some food, some ingredients to make this special fried rice. Because it won't be special without these ingredients, so we need them. There we have it, special fried rice. It's ready, Dad. <laughs> I will continue to answer. I think I still got some more questions in the comments below that you guys have sent. So uh, I will answer them in maybe tomorrow's vlog or I'll try and make another Q&A video in the meantime, like in a couple of days or so, to continue answering the questions. There were some really good questions down below that I wanted to get to eventually. But that is it for today's vlog, guys. Thank you for watching. Remember to look out for tomorrow's vlog. Thanks again. See you in tomorrow's one. Bye.